And Are You Okay is a not safe for work podcast, so any young listeners are discouraged from continuing. However, we literally have no way to track that. So do whatever the hell you want and enjoy the show. Drink your calf. Mike calf. is gonna show you the moon. Half calf. Calf, calf. is what my god he is called Ooh. in the Star Wars universe. Huh. That's no moon. No it's moon. a Death Star. Death Star. I am getting off track. Tra- you Star are stuck in that tractor. To Annie, are you okay? It is a uh, Star, Star Wars, Wars podcast. podcast. <laughs> 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 it gets better every week. <laughs> oh, dude, I just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this week I'm like I uh, we we push back our recording time. This is behind the scenes at Annie, are you okay? We push no, back a little, little peek little peek behind the green curtain. Yeah, yeah. Uh because you know transparently uh, I just wasn't feeling it and these episodes deserve me at full strength. They still not get me at full strength because I'm a fucking idiot and woke up uh later than we were supposed to. So <laughs> But we here. We're here. We here and I'm we here in, I'm, the, in the wee the wee hours of St. Patrick's Day for you guys. Yeah, for you guys. Recording on St. Patrick's Day. If you hear me gulping, it's because I'm downing my energy drink. And uh yeah, that's how should. we're gonna do this one today. <laughs> I'm rolling. I'm rolling good, buddy. I'm rolling. I'm I'm excited. Cause uh you had finished both episodes before I did. I had watched the first part, but not the second part. And you were like, You're gonna love it. And I loved it. <laughs> I knew you would. I knew you would. Well, you were listening to Annie Are You Okay, as we said. A Star Wars podcast. I am your host, Mikey, the human holocron. Darth Plagueis the Wise. You Darth know me. Darth Plagueis the Wise himself. And you you also know my counterpart. Hey. The one, the rogue only. Rogue Check them, baby. Check them. Bro, he is always checked. Mace Wind, dude. Your main main from the Great Hoodie Gang. So many aliases. Smack Talker Skywalker. And I'm going to come up with some more. <laughs> yeah, I more. trust you too. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> if there's anyone who can do it, it's you. <laughs> so. C- C3P, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Dude Baca, you know, off the cuff. Yeah, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, we are here to give you your not safe work take on the galaxy you know and love from far, far away. That thing. Yeah. Okay. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. allegedly. Um, <laughs> so we, that was the most radio, like, that was the time I wanted to press like a sound bar of just like the clip from South Park where <laughs> Michael Jackson goes, Allegedly. and I was just it just reminded me no, of like the no. weenie in the butt you're listening don't, to don't. Geo 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 the morning <laughs> oh man Q102 in the early 90s was everything bro what? K- Casey Kasem's counting them down at night time well I went to bed to that every night bro <laughs> Every night, that man. I know. I know. We uh, we praise him. <laughs> let me let me give Casey Kasem his flowers real quick. R.I.P. But uh, I know we praise that man and Shaggy from Scooby Doo, and I'm a Scooby Doo stan, so I still watch Scooby Doo to this day. But that man's that man's his voice. He was made for radio. It was just so so soothing, <laughs> just silk, just butter, just butter. It's a great, so great guy. Just got a, voice, he was a, he was a mensch. He was a mensch. <laughs> true Mitch and it's crazy like when you see him like in like physically like I can't imagine him doing shaggy like back in those days because like Mm -hmm. he looks like such a a straight lace well put together man and then you play like this mega stoner that talks to a dog (laughs) like Scoob I think I eat too many weed brownies dude (laughs) Scoob (laughs) oh my hand it looks like three hands um (laughs) Shout outs to Shaggy. Yeah. Great guy. 
a real great. one. While, um, while Fred was over there <laughs> trying to play hide the pickle with Daphne while we're trying to solve mysteries and shit. I think he was trying to hide his pickle in Velma too. That's why they always oh, split I, I, off I, I like can see that. that. I can see that. I mean, every now and again, Fred threw him a bone and let uh Velma, let the Velma go with Shaggy and Scooby. You know, <laughs> every now and again. Yeah. He's like, nah, y'all, y'all three, y'all three. He said, I don't got an Emmy for two today. <laughs> he thought I didn't he take was my pre workout with his ascot. Well, I'll tell you what, what? Freddie. Just because you're played by Freddie Prince Jr., Kane and Jarris, you don't think you're that special. <laughs> no, Look, they said, where are these awesome. guys going? We brought it back to Star Wars. <laughs> 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 I actually, I love Freddie Prince Jr. He's great. Oh, that that's my that's my fucking guy. He is um, amazing. Freddy the character, on the other hand, uh, good guy. Let's come back. But um, bit, bit, <laughs> we bit are a bit, bit of a douche. <laughs> we're gonna drop the spoiler warning here because there is just no way we're not talking about um, rebels and definitely some characters who have bit the dust. So, if you're looking for the emotional impact, maybe come back another time. But um, go listen to another episode of Anne, Are You Okay? Because that's we try our best over here. <laughs> or go listen to Dragon Ball for Life, our sister podcast. Folk uh, life, don't worry. Where Matt and Trav just did a great, uh, you know, we don't want to call it like a tribute episode, but it kind of was. It was just kind of remembering Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, for all the great things A celebration things of his life. Celebration yeah. of his life. Um, that is much more aptly put. Thank you, Matt. Uh, so, yeah, I am ready to hyper dive into this thing. Hyper Are you? dive right in. I am. I am. Uh, there All was right, a lot punch here. it, Chewy. I'm excited. Yeah, there is. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I will. I guess that's what yeah. my hyper drive sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I'll put in the. I'll put in the like breakdown falcon noises before I hit the actual thing right hey, now. There you go. <laughs> <Where are we laughs> going? I got that sound bite on tap. Uh, but um, what she say? Yeah, I so, bypassed the compressor. I think she called it a compressor. I she think. does. Yeah, she does. Hey, get you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let yeah, me do this. You do I'm, that? I'm to... <laughs> She's force sensitive, Han. That's how. That's, that's the that's the that's the true crime of the Skywalker trilogy. What, what do you what do you call six movies or nine? What is that called? A nineage? I don't know what that's called. That's what we're gonna call. We call it, call it the Skywalker Nineage. Saga here. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So that, that's the, that's the true crime of the Skywalker Saga is that Han never got to find out how Ray bypassed that compressor. True crime. Yeah. Mm. True mm. crime. Hate to see it. <laughs> Let's dive into this re- small recap for this episode. Um, that we kind of like do the plot and then we talk about the greater themes and some of our theories and all sorts of fun stuff. So where, I'm going to do Mikey that. Mikey tries to do this in as close to one breath as he can. Yeah, that's what happened this time. <laughs> <laughs> I tried my best to, to shorten it up, but we, we, we'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Rex's ragtag team provides security for a covert meeting of the minds between Senators Chuchi and Singh on Pantora. One of the Clone X operatives attempts to kill the senators, but Rex's team apprehend him with the stun blasts before he can escape. Upon interrogation and searching the Clone X operative at their home base on Teth, they find that Omega is a high-priority target by the Empire. Rex requests a meeting with the Bad Batch to tell them about Omega's bounty, quote-unquote, with the ulterior motive of getting Crosshair to divulge more about Tantus and what they were doing to the clones there. Omega and Crosshair tell Rex's team as much as they know, with the mystery surrounding M-Count undiscovered by the clones. Meanwhile, one of the Clone X operatives locates the Belmar Monk Monastery on Teth. The clones are using... Uh, yeah. He plants explosives outside before infiltrating the base. Clone X-2 identifies Omega and makes a call for backup, pulling in additional reinforcements. When the Clone X-2 operative assassinates his captured comrade, Rex's ragtag team and the Bad Batch spring into action and get themselves into cover as battle ensues inside the base. It's revealed that the backup forces coming to retrieve Omega are led by Commander Wolf, uh, commander of the 104th Battalion of Clones. The clones make their escape through the center of the tower as they attempt to avoid the Imperial forces tasked with retrieving Omega. The clones make their way to an escape craft but are shot down by Clone X-2. The clones now must make their way to an extraction point to be picked up by Echo and Gregor. With Clone X-2 and Wolf's forces closing in on the group, Crosshair splits 
off from oh my gosh I lost my space <laughs> splits away yeah, giving splits the other clones a chance to escape <laughs> <laughs> after a hard fought battle Crosshair is saved by the other clones uh, Clone X2 falls off the waterfall where their battle ended as Wolf's forces descend upon the clones Rex confronts Wolf trying to plead with him that as clones they're on the same side Wolf tells his forces to stand down allowing the clones to escape Hunter and Rex have the tough t- conversation that until they truly un- understand Omega's part in all of this, they will never truly be safe, forcing the Bad Batch once again into continuing their mission. Whew. Bow. Bars. Um, Splits off part, from, oh my gosh, name of this, name of this episode. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my favorite part of <laughs> reading oh that gosh. so quickly was when I when I looked up and Matt was applying uh, chapstick. <laughs> I was like, this man uh, knew I was going in. He was like, I got time to get ready. Can't be having uh, just brush my teeth, the white ring around your mouth, (laughs) make it look like you do. Yeah, I'm I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it was like it was one of the things where I feel like (laughs) we've all watched a TV show where someone's like getting ready for something and like the other person's doing their thing. I'm like, I got time for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just give off yeah, that. You minute. give off that. Energy, you're like, I'm good. We're, we're, we got this. I got a minute. <laughs> yeah. he, he's still he's still only in the first episode. <laughs> I, I got, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Time. <laughs> Amazing. All right, Matt. Well, uh, I, that was very long winded from me. But please tell me, tell me your favorite parts. What, what did you love about this episode? Uh so much, man. I so. I'm pretty sure most people probably knew that that was Wolf before the moment, but I like how it was kind of not like thrown in your face that it was Wolf, even though he had like, you know, his signature gear and like his yeah. paint and everything like that. So it was mm-hmm. a cool moment, but it, it's the, even though I like knew it was him, I still feel like when him and Rex had like that uh, reunion for such, it was like, oh, hey, they're together again. <laughs> like it still was like a cool yeah. thing. I also really, 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 really liked something that was, uh, this you know what this show does so good man it really <clears throat> more than most star wars uh properties that i can remember in a while they're really good at trusting the intelligence of the fans like they yeah. just kind of put shit places and be like y'all should know what that is we're not gonna over explain it to you or we're not gonna like dive deep we're just gonna set it here like I say what Marvel does like they have a bad habit Marvel has a bad habit of putting two things that are supposed to go together next to each other and then do nothing did it with it I complained yeah. about it at length with Hawkeye how they had the bull uh, the guy who's Hawkeye's teacher in the comics Duquesne. was just like yeah yeah, yeah Duquesne was like no, had nothing to do with Hawkeye at all but they were teasing it like he did but then it was he legit was just a goofy stepdad <laughs> like, yeah. like that, that, that just wanted a chance to uh play with his sword like <laughs> so I so I said all that to say to set up I really like how some of the clones who are still fighting for the empire just aren't aware what's going on like like yeah. Wolf and his team because it, it, it kind of goes to um, what we were talking about is Star Wars, even though it's in a, a galaxy, a whole galaxy far, far away. Sometimes it can feel very small, i.e. when people go and hide on a planet and then they're found immediately like they could have been mm-hmm. anywhere in that planet. But you pick the exact landing port that they were at. But I like how Wolf's team was kind of in the dark about what was going on. It was just like, nah, like we were literally created to serve this body. Yeah, the name changed. But it's still yeah. Palpatine. Like, right. it's still Palpatine that's, you know, calling the shots. He's always been calling the shots. So it's just like, why wouldn't we continue to follow Order? So it seems that whatever they've been off doing, they weren't really affected by Order 66 or like the Empire being like dastardly now. And he was kind of surprised. He was just like, yo, like, Rex, you of all people, you yeah, would right. turn against the Empire, bro? Like, you're, you're Mr. You're Mr. Stand and Deliver, stand at attention. Like, why mm-hmm. would you turn? And then when Rex was like, nah, they on some fuck shit. What was like, for real? <laughs> I had no idea. So, Stand down. We need to sort this shit out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I so I really like how, you know, that kinda is an explanation or can be used as an explanation to uh not have to flush out why so many clones still are under the Empire's thumb. Cause it could be they they legit didn't know that, yeah. you know, like the Empire was, you know, conducting experiments on clones and killing p- treating regular people as war criminals and you know like snuffing out rebellions like they was just like oh shit like no nah. like they they were you know once you know the senate and now it's just the galactic empire same people i've always known i didn't know there was a problem here 
Yeah. And I, and I, I wonder, part of me is just like, you know, Order 66, what, what happened to all the clones that weren't around Jedi? Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, nothing went off. Like the order probably went off, but because there was no Jedi, like they weren't the ones enacting the genocide. Yeah, they weren't. Uh, so there's they weren't a. Uh, they didn't have like a compulsive need to murder. <laughs> exactly. So and maybe you know because Plo Koon was the Jedi that they served, and he was in a starfighter when he bit it. So right. Maybe that was like the Air Force battalion of like his clones. So maybe Wolf just was just like, oh wow, I can't believe the Jedi committed treason. Like that's wild. I'm glad we took yeah. care of ours because we are loyal to the Republic slash Empire at this point. Um, but yeah, I think that I think that you're spot on with that. It's like there's a lot of these guys that are just. It shows, while we know that the clones had the inhibitor chips that like force them to commit treason or not commit treason, um, betray the Jedi. It kind of is like a lesson about you know, if you just fall fall in line and don't ask any questions whatsoever. You could be on the wrong Any side of things. Questions. Any questions? I. Am but yeah, I, en- I enjoyed that. I <laughs> know oh, you're good, bro. <laughs> I can fill the time, but no. But I really enjoyed that aspect. That uh, not all the clones just have to be, uh, I guess evil for lack of a better word. Like they're not just all like you know, inhibitor chip fully activated, and we're just like bad now. Like some of them do still have like the same temperament that they had from clone wars i.e you know like wolf they were just like oh yeah no i've kind of just been doing the shit that i was made to always do like no- nothing's changed for me over here like we're we're giving orders we go do it but uh, but i also feel like there is a line kind of like what you were saying between like the clone wars who maybe weren't around jedi during order 66 so that it's just business as usual versus like what crosshair went through where it was just like oh blind loyalty like oh like you know this is wrong but you don't have an alternative like oh this is i don't know what else to do like these are the people that made me they told me to do this sure like this is what i feel so inclined to do so i feel like there is a line between the ones who are like oh no we know this is fucked up we're gonna do it anyway because that's what we're told to do versus like wolf and his squad where it's just like yeah they're following orders because it just seems that it's business as usual as it's always right. been since right. you know they were created on camino because the galaxy is so big right and i, I think that yes plays into it. yeah um this show actually <laughs> so, lets the galaxy be big, and I be big, and I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, no, I I I love that we kind of came full circle on your point there. But yeah, it, it definitely has that feeling with him because he's he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong, but he knows that something's off when he realizes that people he trusts and knows are yeah. kind of like you know. I also there's part of me like when all that stuff was happening, like Rex and Wolf don't interact in the Clone Wars very much. Um, but, like, I am now headcanoning that, like, him, Cody, Wolf, and maybe another commander were, like, all squad mates that got, like, the huge promotion because they were so good mm, when they were, like, coming up. I like that. And that's why they're, like, tight as well. Or they have, like, a captain's night, <laughs> like, with just the, the, upper, <laughs> the upper guard yeah. hangout. <laughs> like, yeah. like, no no grunts allowed at this poker game. It's captains yeah. only. Uh, like, Ock troopers like only that. or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. I would, um, love, I would love, I would love, and I know Clone Wars did it, but it like was we would get clone centric episodes of Clone Wars, but I, I would like a like a maybe like a mini series that's like just about the clones during Clone Wars, where we could see like, I, I would, I would really like a show that shows how all the clones went from being the Battle of Geonosis, just carbon cut copy, we're all the same, we just to like individuals like the wolves and the obviously clone force 99 is like they're def- defective that's why they had like different temperaments yeah. but like the rexes and the wolves and the maydays and stuff like that like i would really like to see a look maybe like a mini series or it, it could be a comic where it shows like the clones starting to develop like their individualness <laughs> if that's a word i think that'd be cool because you know, like when when we saw when we saw them on the Battle of Geonosis, outside the fact that some of them had like different colored stripes depending on where they were at, they were all like the same. Like yeah, they, they were, were pretty much just you know how they like to call them. Yeah, um, yeah, it would be kind of like interesting to discover like what inspires like even the color that they decided to paint their armor. Exactly, um, like exactly. For the battalions, like maybe it was a maybe it was an event like with their Jedi that like forced them to do that. You know what I mean? Like maybe for yeah. some reason. 
maybe like Plo Koon was on Lothal during the war and like there was like the Loth wolves like appeared and that's why they all like saved them from like some sort of like problem and, and maybe that's what happened and that's why they like got inspired to do their thing same with like maybe the clones all wear blue in to honor like Anakin's lightsaber color like we don't know you know in the 501st yeah. or whatever who do you um, who do you think I, the first was like because obviously it's kind of I mean I, I would I would assume that all the clones like chose their name or like got a name through committee like on some uh maze runner shit like you gotta like hear like remember your name or whatever but it's like who do you who do you think like was the first clone to be like hey i want a name like i don't want to i don't want to be a number i want to be a name that's a like, that's a great question um probably cut the one who ends up mm. being like the defector um like the first one I can see that. that like like actually like leaves the army um because I think Rex is like by the book and probably went by seven five six seven until he started serving under. Uh, I I bet you Anakin and Rex had like a Finn Poe moment where he's like, "I'm not calling you that." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, no, one thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. I could I could um, see, I could see it being like I could see it having originated in Anakin's battalion where he was just like, "Yeah, you know what? You guys need names," and then other branches was just like oh they got names over there i want a name (laughs) (laughs) no i love that i i I would like to explore some of like the early days of the clones stuff like that and i I think um as good as clone wars is there's really only a couple arcs that like i think center around the clones one of the best of the series is that darkness on Umbara arc um where like anakin has to leave and they all have to you know deal with a jedi general who doesn't have their best interests in mind but um Mm -hmm. I would love for it's like Band of Brothers meets Star Wars, so like that's yeah, I mean, yeah shit. That. <laughs> hey, that, that sounds like a win across the board for me. Yeah, because because it, it is it is to we'll, we'll, we'll get back into the episode, but that is one of my favorite thing about like the clones in its entirety is uh like I like how they were they're all literal carbon copies of a singular person and that's how it started. But I I do like how over the course of the clone wars and <clears throat> with all the shows that have, that cover that time we get to see like the individual that like their individualness their uniqueness start to like shine through like you said like between like what color they choose to paint the armor what name mm-hmm. they choose for themselves because it's like i feel like all their names kind of match per like rex feels yeah. like a rex like yeah, like yeah. rex that's just that's just the name of somebody who just like is the leader of a group leader of a pack like it's just like it's just what it is <laughs> or like you know echo like it, that just matched for me like communications like that just goes like it just uh it works but yeah that, that would be really cool to see like the process when they started to just want to separate themselves from just being a spoke on the wheel <clears throat> yeah and i think um they they have gone on record saying that like the jedi do directly inspire that like individuality um I wonder if Palpatine took that into uh, into his consider into his plans when he uh, was plant plotting all this out. Like, damn, the the Jedi being you know altruistic or as close to altruistic as you can be or want to try to be, they might develop relationships with these clones who are in my head just cannon fodder a means to an end, which might help contribute to order 66 not going off as smoothly as i wanted which is essentially what happened (laughs) you know like ahsoka ahsoka literally survived because rex didn't want he fought the urge to like kill her so like yeah literally how he got it and we've seen you know with with the bad batch you know caleb kanan whatever you want to call him he survived because the batch fought the urge well most of them all of them but one (laughs) fought the urge (laughs) so I wonder if Palpatine, because like we're total tangent, and then we will get back into the episode. Him playing in the shadows, I would imagine that he saw the relationships being built. Like he was around it all the time. So it was just yeah. like, oh, Ahsoka's battalion like paints their, her paintings on their stuff. And he wasn't like, that's kind of concerning that they're starting to develop a real loyalty to these Jedi. That might be an issue for me later down the road. I think he was probably so arrogant though, that he like let it go. And he, he would have never seen like the, the Ahsoka paint doesn't happen until like the end of the clone wars. Yeah. But I was just using that as a point of reference. Cause you know, yeah, cause yeah. like, Obi, I think there's cause other, Obi, cause there's Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan and, yeah. Cause Obi-Wan and Cody were real close. 
like even Super though Cody tight. betrayed him, even though Cody like betrayed him, no no hesitation. <laughs> like, see, shoot see, him I think down. That, <laughs> like that would be another interesting like side story where like maybe uh, Palpatine knows that Cody and Obi Wan are tight, so he increases his inhibitor chip or mm. something like they do, like they try to do to Crosshair. Um, some some retconning, but that retroactive storytelling could maybe explain things a little better um, as to why it oh, happened. That'd be dope. That'd um, be dope. I have a couple of moments that I, I want to talk about in the episode, uh, but before we before we dive into some of those, I really got to call out the action. Uh, nonstop, yeah, it felt man. like. Like, this one really just kind of kept rolling. Um, for two episodes, it certainly did not feel that way as I was watching. Um, I told you, and admittedly, at one, on my rewatch, I was like, I'm so stupid for being like this, but... Um, I told you I was on the edge of my seat, and the reason I was on the edge of my seat is because um, they don't show Echo leaving. So when the clone X operative is putting explosives on the like vehicle, I thought yeah, Echo yeah. was still there, and he he had mm. just given Omega the new like crossbow blaster, yeah, and I was yeah, like, they're about to kill my guy. Blaster. I was like, yeah, they're about I, to that, kill my that guy. That would have been crazy. But he was. That he said he had to go moment. pick up Reg Gregor on a rewatch, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm so stupid!" But I was like, "My hand palms are sweaty, you know. Uh, knees were weak. Knees you know, weak. Arms, arms were heavy. Like, you look like some spaghetti." <laughs> and I was like, "I know, girl, chill." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but on the surface, you looked calm and ready, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't say that for sure. <laughs> I was definitely freaking out a little bit. I was like, I was like, uh, I was like, Echo's got to get off that thing. He wasn't, he wasn't even there. He wasn't even there. <laughs> but um, so I, I do, I, I do, I want, I want to, I want to jump out of order really, really fast, uh, just to point out what my Easter egg would be, because like you brought up the action, so it kind of like fits in perfectly with this. <laughs> I call bullshit on on my to go along with my epic door tangent from the Ahsoka series. How cross how crosshair was able to put a bomb on the muzzle of his gun and shoot it and it didn't blow up on him. (laughs) Magical. (laughs) He does that with the um, with like grappling hooks and stuff. But you're right. Like how the fuck did he like do that unless it was like, one of those like yeah. pucks that he put on in front of it like if he attached it to the one side and then shot the puck instead for it to like launch off like that that's the only way i could but even with that of, like, he didn't like but even with that he didn't like change the muzzle he literally just put the the device on the end of his gun and it shot out so i'm just like unless you have an air setting like on your gun it just shoots pressurized air to launch it like, yeah. that show would have definitely just like blew up like in your face because <laughs> like it's because it's, it's once one because once he shot it as soon as it hit the wall it blew up so i was like why wouldn't the pressure from the gun launching it not set it off blow it up <laughs> yeah no that's a, that's a good point uh we're gonna i'm gonna choose to, to suspend my disbelief but you have have made uh, a very good point that was, like, the, that, like, that was the one thing no nah, you like, know it was, it was. Some, it was no but but like it has some like actual like like you've got credibility behind your argument so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, can't it's, really, it's, it can't it's, really it's be like words. no, Matt. Like, just let Star Wars be Star Wars. No, that was uh, <laughs> that, that's something that they decided to do there. That's sure, is sure something. B- a bit of um, a, it's, it's the electric, it's the electric doors all over again. I was like, oh, that's yeah. <laughs> that's just funny how that worked, physics <laughs> and all that. I guess. <laughs> um, there's uh, the so uh, not surprising because I think we're gonna have a lot more of these. But uh, some of my favorite moments in this episode revolved around Crosshair. Um, first of which being. Hauser's relationship with Crosshair and not trusting him after everything they went through on Ryloth. I love that they went back to some of those season one storylines in this episode, yeah. like with this the Senator Avi Singh, uh, who obviously met with Senator Chooch at the beginning, but then you know, Hauser being really pissed off at Crosshair, like a lot of his men are dead because of him. Um, but then he like learns throughout the episode like, oh wow crosshair really has changed and the audience also gets to see that too um th- through a number of ways you know leading mm-hmm. up to this point um but not the, the clones that you know he directly was like essentially uh offing or responsible for um like killing under the empire so 
uh, it was cool, I think, to see that not everything's good, and, and I'm liking that Crosshair is having to deal with all these things. He has to atone, unlike every other character that's been redeemed in Star Wars, who just, like, dies right after. We're seeing Crosshair have to go through um, the weeds with his brothers and, like, make up for it. And, like, not everyone has totally yeah. forgiven him yet. <clears throat> um, and, you know, while you they are on the same time, they have to work together, but... Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's the damn... No, you're good. Go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I, I too, enjoy a lot Crosshair's journey that... Because I feel like it would have been very easy for... And we talked about this, I think, on the last episode. It would have been very easy for them to... All is forgive. All is forgiven. The situation, like, oh, you helped the mega get out. You're our brother again. Like, embrace. Which it seems that the the batch has gotten to that point where, like, all right, we're one band, one sound again. But everybody else who had dealings with him when he jumped ship is just like, nah. Like, I still, I'm still looking at you funny. And I like how that's playing out because it it reminds me of uh, Zuko joining team avatar like that took yeah. mad episodes before and it literally took him going through something with each of the team for them to be like except you're for our Toph, guy which i think it's funny yeah because right they, like, exactly. a comment about it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like, i wonder if this is gonna be our mission <laughs> like <laughs> it never yeah, happens yeah I, lo- I, lo- I loved it yeah i loved that <laughs> he's everybody else goes on this spiritual journey with zuko <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> But uh, I really like how, yeah, like you were saying, they're, they're bringing up things from the past season. Other clones who don't have as much equity put in with him, like, have less of a reason to be inclined to believe that his uh, his change is, is genuine. So they're just like, mm, I'm looking at you funny. But I really, 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 really am loving this Omega Crosshair friendship. Like, I, I'm like, it might be my favorite thing in the show. Because, you know, you know, I'm anti- main character for most things even though it is an ensemble cast hunter i guess omega is the star of the show but hunter yeah. in terms of the batch is like the lead of, of like right. the match and stuff so i kind of i'm not gonna hold you i'm i'm kind of now with her and crosshair getting really close and it like it seems that crosshair is way more willing to let omega be a soldier like Hunter has like that father daughter relationship. Like he's very protective of her. Like no, hey kids, stay in the back. This and the third. And where Crosshair is obviously very, very overprotective. I, I love the line where she was just like, "You're just as bad as Hunter." And he's like, "I'm much I'm worse. worse." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm that, so much worse. <laughs> like I love that. that. Was, I love that part. <laughs> that was so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I like how I guess you know through their experience on on Tantus or just Crosshair's disposition, he's just like, "Yo, like." She's one of us. We're in the middle of a of a revolution, a clone revolution. Like she's gonna have to get her hands dirty. Like why why try to shield her from this shit? So like he's just like yo, just stick by me. You got your blaster bolt. Like you ready? Like all right, cool. Stay close. Whereas Hunter, I feel is like more of the protector. But um, I was saying I was saying that to say I, I'm kind of over her and Hunter's relationship. Like I'm kind of like all right, yeah, protector, guardian. Like as Omega's getting older, like that relationship is becoming like less impactful for me because he doesn't. Ha- she knows what she's doing. She could take care of herself now at this point. Yeah. So it's yeah. just like he doesn't need to like watch over her as much. And it seems like with Crosshair, it's like this mentor mentoree type of relationship. It's like it it is it does seem like brother sister, which is literally what they are genetically i guess kind of yeah yeah you know like their brother sister which he is with everybody but you know <clears throat> i feel like wrecker kind of takes on the crazy fun uncle <laughs> like like yeah. role for her like like tech was like the stern uncle like that you know gets on your nerves but like gives you wisdom and things and like hunters like that and i feel like mm-hmm. crosshair has been like a brother for her and i'm liking it and like and i had said last week uh crosshair and, and, and bachelor's relationship so it's just like I li- I like that they're like forming their own thing inside of the group and you know having the people see that and it was like oh shit like he really cares for the for that kid like okay yeah yeah I and I you. like that um the way Omega was imitating Hunter at the beginning of their relationship she's now imitating Crosshair um, yes yes and Hunter's noticing too and it's like I'm sure that yeah. concerns him a little bit but at the same time um. It's, it's one of those things where I, I, I certainly 
uh, feel like maybe Hunter's getting like slightly jealous because he's like, oh, she used to look up to me like that. Now she's looking up to Crosshair, and I don't know if we can totally trust him, even though, you know, we're trying our best right now. So it's one of those things where, um, and she's kind of copied everyone else, but not to the extent of Hunter, where like she's like actually copying like Hunter's like mannerisms or like trying to yeah. twirl the the thing around, like she's twirling the knife or like what like Hunter yeah. twirls the knife. Um, and now she had a toothpick also. I think, like, there's probably a lot of fans who are kind of hoping that, like, oh, by the end of things, like, she I love, I love has, that. like, text goggles around I her neck with the toothpick in her mouth, Hunter's bandana on, and, like, something from she's, her. She, like, the she's the, she's the last Ronin. <laughs> yeah, 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 she's the last Ronin. <laughs> That's such a good uh, call out. But, <laughs> just, um, <laughs> just a piece of everybody's gear. But yeah, I think it's great that we got that moment between uh, her and Crosshair where he says he's like, "Oh, I'm much worse," um, because it just yeah. does. It I really does show like the level of care he has, and, and honestly, like it, it was good for the other clones to see that because Hauser lets his guard down and is like, "Oh shit, you have changed." Like I I needed to see that to know that there's like some sort of humanity in you. And then you realize that their struggle is very similar when he says that like loyalty was really important to me. Loyalty was really important to Hauser too. You know, he was he literally betrayed the Empire due to his loyalty to Cham Syndulla and, and the people of Ryloth because of all that he sacrificed yeah. for them. Um, so, like, there is something to be said about, like, those are, like, shared experiences. That maybe, you know, only the clones can really relate to each other in that sense. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of shared experiences like that, but it's good to see that we're getting more of those exposed to us as we go on, especially since this might be the last medium or show that, like, really covers the clones. Like, cause I can't, I just can't see them coming back to this, like, I guess like pot of a Star Wars stew and pulling out another, you know, cup for us, another show for us to really like divulge into like deeper clone relationships as badly as I think, uh, we know that there's like room for the storytelling there. I just don't think that we're necessarily going to spend a lot more time with them so getting some of these moments is really refreshing knowing that we don't have that many episodes left covering the clones it's it's uh eight left at this point um so yeah i definitely am enjoying that and i will enjoy it as much as i can despite the fact that the story is definitely going to a much darker place so um i think uh one thing that we haven't really talked much about and we're going to bring up a theory from someone um on twitter uh that i thought was really interesting but uh the clone x operatives and what they're doing to them on Tantis seems to be much darker than we realized. And mm -hmm. um, I think that that's where Crosshair's shaky hand is coming from is because he did not make it through the other side uh, in terms of like the testing that they were doing on the clones and the fact that like the ones who get the ones who don't make it pretty much get eliminated. But like he made it out it feels weird. Sorry about that. My child couldn't get her uh, iPad off the charger. <laughs> I'm like, Paul, Paul, Paul. I'm like, pull it out, pull it out. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but before we uh, get into the Clone X, because, yeah, I have concerns about that storyline. Uh, just to talk about the Hauser Crosshair uh, conversation. I really like, for me, how it kind of, it almost... Uh, mirrored exactly for me the conversation that Crosshair had with Hunter like when they had that final like he was just like you know we're all just trying to do the best that we can like so like when him and Hauser had like that moment I kind of took that like oh like that really resonated with him as a moment that you know like his brother who he's been at odds with for this time was just like hey like you know I can't forgive you for everything but like you know the parts that I can forgive I will <laughs> like you know that that type time kind you know it's funny uh, wild obscure Game of Thrones reference. Uh, I kind of hearken that back to the scene with uh with John and Theon in like the last season, where you know where they he Theon like was just like bro, like I fucked up, like my bad, <laughs> like that yeah. that was on me. Like I betrayed you guys. Like I chose my dad over Ned Stark, who was really my dad, and shit went super left <laughs> because of a decision I made. And John was just like, well, you know, you helped my sister escape a really bad situation we we have good we've had many good times you've been a sibling to me like you know what i can forgive you for i will but you know the parts that i can't just you know let's 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 just let's, let's just stay away from those topics because <laughs> it's not going to yeah. turn well so i really liked how crosshair 
like kind of emulated Hunter's sentiment. Like, hey, man, like I know I know some fucked up things have happened. A lot of it because of me. But, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make good for it, which I'm still on the fence if I think Crosshair is going to make it out or not, because it's like I really do see in my brain. Like when I close my eyes, I see Crosshair and Batcher like just going off and to do their own thing like yeah just to do to do like have their own adventures like i really do see that so but i also could see if crosshair does end up having to make the sacrifice play and that's like his final atonement ah dragon ball z reference r.i.p to the goat (laughs) r.i.p to the goat but yes uh clone x let's clone clone x clone x one all right well let's talk about the (laughs) elephant in the room which is everyone thinking that the clone x operative that fights tech on the waterfall or fights <laughs> crosshair on the waterfall is tech oh, wait um, way to bury the lead <laughs> yeah right i um i don't like this like i really much, ho- uh, i really hope it's i i hate it and i feel like that's exactly what's about to happen <laughs> yeah i think it's a low-hanging fruit um there are certain things that uh some of the time some of the ways that clone x responded like dialogue wise even though their voice is very um, altered, it felt like the cadence in which um, D. Bradley Baker even his, uses text. Even voice. his, even his helmet shape, because Tech kind of had like that long, elongated. Yeah. Even though he had like the opening for his goggles to come down, but he kind of had like yeah, like that. Uh, what the fuck? Like point? Like it kind of comes to a point towards like the a end. Snout. Like it's like you. Yeah, yes, that's the yeah. word I was looking for. Yeah, he had in Clone X one, two, three, four, five, like had that saying, had like the antenna part. Like I was like, mm-hmm. mm. even the the backpack had like the, the text backpack was obviously huge. But yeah, this is it's like, you the know, clone uh, commando backpack. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's so definitely... I was just like Yeah, <sighs> I'm nervous. I really I really I'm a little hope nervous it's too. not. I really yeah. hope it's not, but but I'm trying to I'm trying to think of so my my concerns is kind of like what you're saying. It's such low hanging fruit that it's hard for me to believe that Filoni would like not think fans would be upset about that. Like they'd be like, oh come on, bro. Like, but on the other side of it, it being the last season, I don't know who else you could make that, and it'd be like an impactful reveal. Like they be like, oh Fair. shit, because I feel like they're looking for that. Like they want to have some of that surprise, like to go out with a bang. And you know, anytime you have like a mass character, uh, except I mean, fuck it. I mean, shit. In Ahsoka, uh, man's man, smoke man, my smoke didn't end up being anybody. Anything. So yeah, <laughs> like, we have we have to speculate could. a little bit responsibly uh, in this vein. But it's also like that's part of the fun. So. <laughs> Yo, how how hilarious how hilarious would that be if the Filoni verse hit us with that again? <laughs> and Glenn Coex isn't anyone of no. I'm actually right. so prepared. I'm so prepared for that. Honestly, I do think I want it. I'd rather it be that. I I do. Like, I I. It could be anyone but Tech. It can be anyone yeah. but Tech. I just don't want it to be Tech. <laughs> yeah, Please and I think that tech. like if it is Tech, I just the one thing that like would bother me is like oh Crosshair like didn't get conditioned even though his ch- chip was turned up to eleven, but Tech somehow. Uh, like gets through the conditioning and gets like so like that, that it just doesn't seem so I look, for him. so i looked at that two ways at first i didn't think it was tech because you had sent me the the thing did you did we talk about that yet because i know we want to no, credit the people yeah we're I will, i'm okay. gonna credit the people uh after you go through but this All i right, think right. this so, theory that we're about to bring oh. up by someone on twitter is is very strong and i really like the idea so we'll talk about that so so my 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 fear for what you just said about the crosshairs part them making the point to point out that it didn't work i felt was like foreboding like for them to be like oh there's a process that these clones are put through agonizing torture to basically reset them and just make them murder bots and crosshair taking his them taking seconds out of the show for him to be like hey it doesn't work on all people i feel like that's a perfect disarming thing to say to be like oh well if it doesn't work on the bad bats then that can't be tech for then it to be tech and then you could got kind of get into like oh you know like because it didn't work on you we we had to practice on someone else like we we perfected the art of this and the third or even some you know it would be super fucked up if like they part of tech's torture was like they forced him to perfect the the process like maybe tech's been like 
help like not helping but like forcefully the these whatever these experiments are that are like turning these clones into like shadow murder bots maybe tech is a part of that somehow maybe that's part of like his torture like they're like oh well this this shit didn't work on your brother you need to figure out what the what the issue is yeah like, or like and it. then maybe maybe the whole time crosshair and omega are there they're like we'll kill them if you don't like yeah yeah this. Like, i kind yeah, of like yeah, that like, i would be okay if that's how if tech survived and that's how they're utilizing the character um, like they got them like locked in a lab like testing yeah. on other clones like, I would like all, my all, other thing is all like, dish all disheveled and unkept it's got a beard now oh, like, <laughs> like if he looked like a mad scientist that would be so um, yeah just, like yeah yeah like like they, <laughs> they just been giving him like shitty rations like he's all frail <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> one millimeter portion it. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. But like, yeah. Uh, if if the other thing I'm thinking is like total soap opera, like his fall caused amnesia, and that was what made the program. Oh, like, I fucking it. hate the amnesia storyline. I, oh, I, I hate it so much. That's the only thing I can think of. That's the only thing I think of. Bro, like, okay, this amne- amnesia, amnesia, amnesia for me is we need to submit this script at midnight and it's now 1157 and we can't figure out how to have this character change their allegiance amnesia <laughs> <laughs> i got it amnesia perfect amnesia. print it <laughs> print it <laughs> so um uh i'm gonna bring up another clone that it could be uh this theory comes from um at cad live underscore on twitter he also is a streamer so uh you know if you're looking to watch someone stream things go check him out um go he stream has his shit incredible theory he tweets all right guys hear me out i think clone x could potentially be dogma the reason why i think that is because he was incredibly skilled on umbara and most likely still in prison at the end of the clone wars maybe hemlock wanted to make use of him again just a theory hashtag the bad batch i love this theory um i think that like dogma being imprisoned and hemlock getting his hands on clones that were like already imprisoned to be the first batch of clone x operatives makes so much sense because it's still republic property and palpatine would probably just be like do what you need to do like this is if you think this experiment is ultimately (laughs) yeah ultimately gonna get me where i want to be like hemlock is not coming out of nowhere he didn't just hire a scientist right after he killed all the jedi you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like these guys have all been a part of the republic and are now part of the empire but like there are you know he's planning ahead and all these experiments just seem like it makes sense to have these like clone operatives just like operating utilizing the republic you know what i was just um, what sorry but so to to cross pollinate what we were talking about earlier hemlock maybe hemlock is the response to what we were saying before that some of these clones did develop loyalties to the Jedi and like individualness and you know uniqueness and like oh I do like some that. shit like that, he was brought yeah, on that, like, like early could, during the like, like during the Clone Wars he was like Palpatine's like I'm going to need like a contingency for this how do we reprogram our yeah because like yeah exactly like maybe Hemlock was like and that that kind of like goes with like these clone these shadow clone experiments he's just like yo like order 66 didn't go off perfectly i didn't account for some of these clones actually developing bonds with the jedi we need to figure out a quick way to like reset these motherfuckers if i have to like and he's just like figure yeah. it out take some oh there's some clones over there in, in some prisons figure it out <laughs> yeah figure so it out. i think um cad makes a really good point using dogma because i mean dogma was loyal to a fault without even needing, like, chip activation, but ultimately killed Pon Krell after he saw what he did to his brothers. So there was, like, that level of, I think, like, resentment for um, the Jedi and the Republic that were, like, innately ingrained right. in his character, but still formidable as, like, a clone in the 501st. So I think he's the perfect guy to kind of, like, send down this this path. Him and, I don't know, people might not know, but from an earlier uh, season of The Clone Wars... Um, there is a clone named Slick who betrays them from, I think the, like, Asajj Ventress, like, bribes him to turn on the clones. That's another candidate I think that would be great. These clones who have just kind of, like, been in prison. It's like, well, what happened to them? This is a good way to pull them back into the story and make them formidable adversaries for the clones we're rooting for, right? Um, and we know and we know Asajj is going to be in the show, so that, that true. would be... They could have an interaction. That could be something. Yeah. To play yeah. off of. To make, to still make, like, the reveal of who this clone is, like, meaningful. Mm-hmm. 
and not it not have it be tech which god please no <laughs> like, <laughs> we will, we like, will my, see. like michael scott when toby came back like no no please god, god no. no why why <laughs> no. i don't want i, do, <laughs> I don't oh, want it i don't want it at all you know you know um, what i would really love to see in the last season because we're talking we're talking about uh our guy, she used like contingency contingency plans and hemlock and everything. One thing that I uh, that does strike me as funny that it always tickles me that these these this particular batch of clones to use up for lack of a better term, or just even like this uh, clone rebellion uprising. I feel like Palpatine is so out of the loop about that. Like I feel like he's so focused on you know. He does, oh, he making, doesn't care. He's like, Yo, you he doesn't. That. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like he's so unaware of how much wreck these clones are really causing behind the scenes and like, de- like helping to, de- to to take down the Empire, like whether directly or indirectly. I would love to see in this final season some type of acknowledgement from Palpatine. Like, ah, oh, that fucking batch 99. Like, I should have yeah, took yeah. care of them when that I had the chance. Really funny. Like, fucking I would love that. Force 99. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I would love some type of acknowledgement that, like, damn, like, these guys, because they, the, they've been a thorn, they've been a thorn in his side that he hasn't known about for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, like, you know, Omega, like, the, his perfect donor, like, we talked about this whatever happens to omega that forces him to pivot and need grogu one could assume is a direct result of something that clone force 99 did so it's like they they directly derail any elongate your necromancer plans like you you essentially as of two episodes ago necromancer was done they found their perfect don blood donor for the m count transfer like it's over like it should it should have been he should have been able to grow snokes in the lab right now but you know yeah because of clone force 99 she got away <laughs> and we know we know that uh grogu was an integral part of that and that doesn't happen until way down the line so right. we know like the shit the plans somehow get paused or you know put on the back burner or delayed and one would assume it's because of 99 so it's like i would love that like even if it's just like a sentence like where he's just like handle these clones before i handle them myself some some shit are, like just are you saying like, are you saying somehow project necromancer got delayed <laughs> yes. Sorry, that was tongue in cheek to somehow Palpatine returned. I'm sure you got that. But, uh... <laughs> somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> oh man, what a what a disposition! <laughs> somehow Palpatine Palpatine has returned. But yeah, but I, I would I would love that 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 would that would uh that I feel like that would just kind of be like the. Uh, the uh the icing on the cake the strawberry the the cherry on top was just like you know we we all love clone force 99 but because this show is so good at making the galaxy feel big that you know it it, you do kind of feel that sense of like what they're doing it's a it's like it can feel like a drop in the bucket like because the show is about yeah. them we're obviously focused on what they're doing but when you think about everything that's happening during this timeline you're like like we just said Palpatine's just like eh, i don't got time to worry about that y'all handle it so it's like it can feel like uh miniscule so like to to kind of give them their just do like no nah, they were heavy hitters in the clone wars yeah and, like, they did something they that afterwards. had a massive ramifications like on like the galaxy at large um exactly i think you and i have have like said this before and we've certainly felt how many times have I called the Bad Batch the best show that nobody's watching um yeah but now that, now that, that we're in that season rings three, the power <laughs> yeah that too I fucking love that show um oh, <laughs> so, but, good. So, good. so good um but the whole the fact that we're like in season three now and they're like starting to connect to some of these like bigger things like huge things that are important plot points to the Skywalker saga um now make Bad Batch this viewing experience where i think yeah we're gonna get a rich character driven story from these guys but um it has a big impact and it's gonna enhance your viewing experience i am certain that when i go back and watch rise of skywalker after having watched this that i will feel better about it when season three is over there's there's just something every to every layer they add every wrinkle they add and like yeah don't get me wrong i get it like they're retconning some stuff to make things feel better but that's what they did with the Clone Wars as well. So 
I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna act like fleshing out the universe helping the sequel trilogy stuff make more sense is a bad thing when I praise the Clone Wars for making episodes two and episodes three that much better. Um, I think it'd be really hypocritical. So I'm all for it. And I'm glad that the Mandalorian is doing um, this as well, uh, just in different parts of the timeline. So it's definitely good to, to be saying stuff like that. They love you, Mando. R.I.P. Man, we're losing R. legends R. this year, dude. Oh, jeez. Yeah, man. It's, it's something. It's something. You know, it's they rough. say that uh, it happens in threes. So, you know, Carl Weathers, Tori I feel like who else? So, I feel like someone else passed this year. I feel like it was a female. Can't think of who it is. Sure, it'll randomly pop into my body. Ah, it was such and such. Oh, it was, yeah. <laughs> I'm in the middle of the Easter eggs. will be like, it was this <laughs> <You're> person. Like, <laughs> yeah, so that's probably what will happen. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, yeah, they did die. They did. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the mood shifts. Uh, respects. Respects and love yeah, to the family. Respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, everyone press F in the chat. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> that was good. So, um,. <laughs> I, uh, we do have um, an Ask Me Anything. I gotta, I gotta pull it out of the weeds here. From, again, our guy, Jeremy. Um, hey! You know, we, love we love the Jeremy Jeremys. He's, he's constantly... Jeremy. Mr. Jeremy, uh, Mr. Jeremy and baby Jeremy. <laughs> constantly providing us with Ask Me Anything, which I very much appreciate. Um, this comes off of our the coattails of our... Uh, conversation about Dune at the last and or the end of the last episode. So if you um, don't know, Dune is obviously a huge influence on Star Wars. Uh, George Lucas said so himself. Um, yep, yep. But break down spice and oh yeah, you know I should do the sound. It's time for S P A. I don't. I don't know why I chose the prices right, but it just it, feels, it just it works. It works. It yeah. feels right. <laughs> it does. The, and they the, haven't sued the me. Price yet, is so. wrong, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy asks, break down spice in both Dune and the Star Wars universes. Similarities, differences. Which one do you like more? Um, I think spice in Dune is a, a, it's, integral it's to the everything. Plot. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's, lit, it's literally how they travel. <laughs> like, yeah, like um, they can't travel to space without spice, and it like gives them like this weird kind of like clairvoyance. Um, yeah, I think spice in Star Wars is literally just like the opiates of the masses of anyone in the underworld who's just trying to kind of like get away. I think that spice is probably like just as hallucinogenic, um, but not in like this foreboding it's the uh, I'm show it's, you the future it's, type. it's the drop it's the drops of dc yeah. like you know yeah. how dc like they have drops and everybody's like a drop head like that's like their thing that's yeah, that's yeah. like what spice is in star wars for me. yeah yeah it's just kind of mm-hmm. like a, a reoccurring drug a reoccurring drug that's fucking yeah up it's, it was a way for them to be like these guys are addicted to heroin without being addicted to heroin because we're in a different galaxy so yeah <laughs> um yeah that is always what it's been to me. In funny, Wars, funny. Uh, yo, it's 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 so funny uh, about the this question because randomly I fell into a Dune uh, YouTube wormhole. I just kind of got stuck there, and uh, the reason why spice is so important. So this is hilarious that I know this now, and I, I didn't know this like a week <laughs> ago. But uh, yeah, so whatever happened apocalyptic wise in the Dune world that like took us from you know being like. Uh, them from being like a modernized world to like kind of more grassroots there's like there's like a technological thing that happened where all machines in like the doom world uh, technology basically went they went analog with everything essentially like technolo- <laughs> technology like went away so when when navigating space they don't have any navigational tools they're literally like freestyling out there and there's uh, specific to your clairvoyancy point there are people basically i guess space navigators where they use spice uh and like their that clairvoyant thing like helps them get places they're like okay like i can see the way yo okay this connects directly to star wars so i'm really glad you brought that up (laughs) so and i also think they kind of like mentioned that in dune part one but i gotta be honest like first this is my first venture into dune whatsoever so like dune part one and part two by uh denny villanueva is my first introduction 
to you know this area of science fiction and and i definitely plan on rewatching both movies and, and learning a little more about it um and and it's but, that part is i think is literally i think it's kind of mentioned as like a throwaway line like that's not like it but they, they don't like go deep into they don't go deep like, into it but it is how they navigate space well space. the chiss yep. ascendancy which thrawn comes from adult chiss are never force sensitive but the force sensitive children of the chiss are called mm. in their language skywalkers ah, and I they are the that. ones who navigate hyperspace so that is a really interesting connection there i wonder if timothy zahn was inspired by that aspect of of dune and spice um another thing that spice is used for in star wars is is medicine um but we don't really learn that until i think like the second to last arc of the clone wars is when they like mention that spice can be used like raw spice can be refined into medicine um so it's just kind of like i guess it's like the lifeblood of any type of drug in the star wars universe um but it's kind of cool that dune has much more of a it's like you know what's funny mcguffin makes the universe work so is it really a mcguffin it's just kind of like yeah i would that's that's actually like a perfect way to put it spice in the dune world especially if you're like if you live on arrakis which is dune's name uh uh, with like the name that it became uh it's 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 literally the force like it's it's everything like it's in everything it's everywhere Mm -hmm. like it's in the it's in the food that the people eat it's it's in the air that they breathe that's like prolonged exposure gives you the blue eyes and stuff like that so it's just like kind of what you were saying like it's is it a MacGuffin if it controls literally everything? <laughs> like, yeah. But it's so it's so crazy because it kind of is a MacGuffin because, spoiler alerts, have you seen Dune 2, right? Like, I've seen, seen the Dune one? Part 2, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So kind of spoiler, not a spoiler. But um, Paul Atreides uh, is... Hate to hate to break it to you, but he's motivated off of like selfish reasons. Like he wants mm-hmm. to get revenge for his father, so he knows that he can't take on the emperor or or the other great houses who like let his dad get murdered Die. essentially. Yeah, with without without an army. So like right. a so lot he of uses his the, he uses the freeman is what it's coming to. Yes, right? when, like, he one thousand yeah. percent uses the freeman. One thousand percent, like that whole uh, Lisa Gaib shit. Like he feeds into yeah. it, like and uses the dogma. <laughs> like haha, <laughs> did it? Did mm-hmm. it bring it all back to Star Wars? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, he uh-huh. <laughs> he uses the he uses the dogma to like get them on his side to like help him fight this war. But uh, so that does kind of for for Paul Atreides, Spice is a MacGuffin. It doesn't. It's like I don't give a fuck about this shit. I know it's important. I right. need to use it to like become part of this culture and also it's going to help me see the future hell yeah it's like a necessary tool but like for the fremen or for like the great houses or the emperor like no that's the thing like no we only care about this planet because of the spice and he's just like well i just want to kill you guys and i need their help so Mm -hmm. guess i care about spice too (laughs) yeah (laughs) like time but no it's it's really awesome it's very layered Dune, dune is dope yeah, no, it definitely seems awesome. I'm, I'm hoping that, like you said last week, this is uh, Star Wars for the next generation. Um, something like that, it is. that they can, like, younger audiences can latch onto and be like, this is why I fell in love with science fiction, because they are beautiful, ele- like, <laughs> elegantly done movies um, with just, like, this incredible cast. Like, I, they're just killing it at, at around every turn. And I'm, I'm re- very excited to see where it goes um, and learn more about just, like, the universe. I think it's, it's really cool. Um, yeah. it's kind of whoever like the, whoever, uh, whoever Dune's casting director is I'll, I'll I'll have a name so we can accurately give this person their flowers the next time we talk about this yeah. but sh- chef's kiss <laughs> like, oh, chef's absolutely. kiss like it's perfect casting across the board I know that you are heavy in your Lord of the Rings bag um, for me yeah. Lord of the Rings is one of those things where it's like it's almost because I'm so into Star Wars and, and Marvel it's that area of fantasy that like I disconnect when I go in there. Like my escapism is a little more enhanced because I don't know what's going on in that universe. So when I'm watching rings of power and I'm seeing, you know, certain things happen or be created that, that show up in Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit, I'm like my jaws to the floor dropped. Like that's how that happens. I didn't read the yeah, Cimmerillion. And I'm like, I'm like there at that the, like, Mordor down, like with my, yeah. Oh, that's so that good. Mordor I, I'm like, was so good. I'm, I'm just sitting here like, Wow, this is great. <laughs> bright eyed, bright eyed and 
bright eye and bushy tail just ready right. ready for and it. I feel like that's how I'll be about, about Dune as it progresses as well. So I'm um, really excited about that. And I think it's it's good to have stuff that you can like really dive deep into and be very super passionate about and then have other areas and different fandoms where you're like, I'm coming here to just kind of be along for the ride. Let's go. <laughs> um, but I find it very interesting. Uh, we, so <laughs> we did a little out of order this week. Usually I do the Easter eggs before we, we go into the ask me anything. Um, <laughs> but uh, as, as you know, here, I'm still kind of like waking up. So uh, let's do the Easter eggs uh, real quick uh, before we move <laughs> on. Um, so, the we, Beaumont. we are in. He's still waking up. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's me. Uh, the Bomar Monastery on Teth first appears in the Clone Wars movie. It's a nice homage to the movie that started Lucasfilm Animation. Um, they remove an electrical suicide capsule from the Clone X operative. Uh, that was used by the Clone X operative that they captured in Season 2 of Bad Batch, but it's first seen in The Mandalorian uh, Season 2 episode, The Heiress. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but there's like the when Bo Katan is like interrogating that one Imperial officer, he kills himself using the same method. So ah, yes, I do remember that. Position. Um, and then the uh, Wolf is the second clone commander <laughs> that works for the Empire, that but, but retains his paint scheme from the Clone Wars. Uh, Hauser was the other. This is likely a creative choice to show autonomy and independence, or the clones that are more likely to defect. I think that's what we're seeing. Yeah. Um, I, I the only love one who, that. Like, uh, sorry, I was just going to say, the only clone who, um, like, is a weird, like, gray area of this is Cody, because Cody keeps the same markings, but his colors change from orange to gray. So, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, just to that point, um, with them keeping, like, their wolf and uh, <clears throat> keeping his color scheme and stuff. I really liked the visual of them when they were like running to like get away from the empire and they were like going through like the the spirally staircase. I really liked seeing like each individual uh armor design like cuz it was it was like a it was like a, a misfit a island of misfit toys type of thing where he's like yeah, you got yeah, 99 the who are all the the yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and I I really liked that cuz again it just goes back to you know like the clone the clones from their original introduction were all uniform same thing and now we got like this group of clones that are, and they're all wearing like different shit and i really thought it was cool like there's some there's something very uh cathartic for me that with all this individuality that the clones express like Rex still kind of maintains just the base clone uniform. Like, you know, mm-hmm. he, he obviously has like his markings on it for like his kills and stuff. But, you know, you see Wolf, he fully decked his out full detail. You know, obviously 99, they hold different color scheme from everybody else. Uh, you know, <clears throat> other clones we've seen do like certain shit. Ahsoka's clans have the, the her markings and stuff. But like with Rex, like his he he keeps and, and it fits him because it's like he's very militant like he's very mm-hmm. like leader of the pack so it's just like i just think that's really cool that uh he chooses just to kind of like keep it simple like just the like yeah like you know i'm still show my individualities and y'all see that i catch bodies with all these tally marks but he doesn't like go above to like deck himself out and it still is just yeah. like if anything he's like so yeah. i don't want to say set in his ways because rex goes through a lot of growth but um to your point like he's the he merges his clone phase one helmet with his clone phase two helmet that's why his visor is the same there's weld marks where he like modified it to fit his needs and he did the same thing with like his chest piece and stuff like that so like there are weld marks of him taking the benefits of phase one armor and combining them with benefits of phase two armor just to show his kind of like militant prowess Um, but to your point still keeps it pretty regular compared to the other clones like um, design or at least falls in line with the arc troopers yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. like fits his character like yeah like rex what rex would keep it as close to the original model as it would because like that's Mm -hmm. that's who he is (laughs) he lives he lives breathe and dies the clone the cause baby (laughs) yeah the ja guys are are enough for him on his helmet to show that he's like yeah i got this um the last exactly. thing we've already mentioned, uh, Omega is seen playing with a toothpick on the way to Teth. Uh, in earlier seasons, we saw her emulating Hunter similarly. Um, that was just, a, you know, great to call that out again as um, 
development for her character and just kind of like you know these things are oh it's like poetry it rhymes um <laughs> uh, all those all those great, great things um it's so you know i think we're coming through this much quicker than i i anticipated but this episode was very action-packed um and i think when that happens like there's not as much from like a plot standpoint uh the one thing that i think right. that we haven't really touched on is just the fact that the Bad Batch are now kind of like forced to figure out why Omega is such a big part of things, which I feel like oh, is just shit. into the crosshairs, so I, pun intended, um, I, of the Empire. Go ahead. Yeah, I told. I was gonna say we. It's a bit different, but we literally called how that conversation would go. We like somebody mm-hmm. like Rex or Cody who's been around the Jedi who would have yeah. heard something about that would be like, oh, that sounds familiar. And that's literally what happened. <laughs> yeah. They don't know exactly what the town is, but like they've heard it before. Um yeah. I also and we literally I love when they're interrogating the clone uh clone X operative and he's like, oh yeah, we know about Tentus. <laughs> I'm like, Rex, you fuck it. You're kind of a dick, but I love it. <laughs> It was no, that part that part um, was awesome. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that was good. I like that a lot. I do like that a lot. Do you, so. I, uh, man, let me let me let me ask you, Annie Swing, if I if I may. No, I got something me, for yeah, you. Yeah, please, please, I got something for you. Yeah. Do you think? Uh, because you were talking about the interrogation scene. Uh, with the uh the the shadow uh <clears throat> assassin that they had captured. And uh, when clone, when clone, when clone hair, when crosshair recognized his, that guy, he was just like, "Oh shit! Like we got to get out of here! Like we're like we're screwed! Like we got to go!" Yeah. And when he kind of was like saying, "Like oh, like what's wrong, brother? Like you could have been one of us and stuff like that." And crosshair was just like, "Oh, he's lying." Do you think that was just a tactic, or do you think that there is still a bit more that crosshair isn't telling everybody? You think there's still some stuff that he's um, keeping close to the vest? For the plot, I think he's keeping something to himself. But if he's not, I do I do think that that clone was trying to manipulate the other clones into turning on Crosshair to make mm-hmm. it easier for him to escape. Um, so it served a dual purpose, but I still think that Crosshair is not telling them everything. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm rolling. I could be wrong, but I, I do genuinely feel like there's one more piece, like something else has to drop and the other clones are going to be like, the fuck didn't you tell us this earlier for? And no, then it's going to be like a big thing that ends up being yeah. a problem. I, f- I feel, I feel the same way. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence because like you just said, plot wise, that is, seems to be the most logical way that, you know, that keeps, that's like a reoccurring question like oh is that everything have you told us everything mm-hmm. is that all of it like that kind of keeps coming up so it's just like it would lead you to believe that there is like going to be one of one other thing to drop like you said where my skepticism is i don't know what that word real would be that's bigger than what already has like come out like i don't like i like, think it's un- probably the only tech is that one clone is the other thing like out I was I was just about to say I was just about to say the only thing that I could think would be a big reveal that'd be like what the fuck is like if Crosshair is aware that Tech is still alive but he knows that he's like gone like he knows that he's mm-hmm. been wiped and is like yeah. that he's not coming back like may, maybe part of that failed experiment that didn't work on Crosshair like maybe he was either present or he knew that they did that to Tech and he's like I'm not about to tell you Tech is still alive when I know he's dead. Like I, I could see that conversation yeah. coming out, like, "Oh, why didn't you tell us?" And it's like, "He's gone. That's not him anymore." Like, yeah, it's I wasn't about anymore, to tell yeah. you that. Yeah, like he, the, the person you thought you knew. You already lost like, your brother once. Did you really need to lose him oh, again? Like, ex- exactly. Yeah. I could see that being like the the thing that might have been referenced to when he was just like, "Oh shit, they didn't let the shadow assassins out." Like, fuck. I know. I know that means Tech is probably on his way. Like, could yeah. be, could be that. And you know what? If that's how they play it, I won't be as mad if Tech is Clone X. 
like okay. if like crosshair you got knew convinced the whole over the course of the storytelling you were like <laughs> from my, from myself but but this is our story that we've created in our heads so this that's might true, not happen true. at all it might not but, but I, we've been I pretty spot on with predictions lately so <laughs> I, I feel know. so too i feel so too but i yeah I, I would not be upset if uh crosshair is aware that tech's physical body survived but like his mind is gone and he didn't want to like bring mm-hmm. that pain to the, to his brothers like you just said like you, you lost them once like why go through that again he's gone yeah like, it's not it's not the person amnesia, <laughs> amnesia. <He's gone. laughs> i'm just gonna make that the title of the episode and all caps, i'm here for amnesia. it amnesia <laughs> oh, yeah i love that well that has I been I uh it. any are you okay's coverage of star wars the bad batch season three episode six infiltration and episode seven extraction we were very excited to um, continue to cover this uh, every week for you guys. Um, so the just you know, in, I guess inside baseball, we did not get screeners because we're not super big uh, Star Wars content creators yet. Um, yet. But a lot of them did receive the first eight episodes, so they are one episode ahead of us. Uh, luckily, I haven't seen any leaks, which is fantastic. I think that the people who got yeah, them are doing very awesome. responsible um, with what they know. And uh, hopefully, as we all start to enter the remainder of this season in the dark, um, everyone just kind of like loses their mind uh, in tandem, and we have some really fun discussions ahead of us. Um, but for now, you can like, follow, subscribe, do all those things um, by checking us out at Annie Are You OK Pod on Instagram and Twitter. That is the letters A and I Are You OK Pod on Instagram and Twitter. And you can follow our sister podcast, Dragon Ball for Life, hey. on uh, where Matt and Trav go over all things anime, mostly Dragon Ball at the moment. Um, but there are plans to expand and cover all sorts of different random shit. We working um, on some things. Yeah, we doing it. We doing it. You can also go to Cospalooza if you live in the tri-state area in Philadelphia at Milk Boy on April 6th. It is a cosplay-encouraged dance party where we will be mixing in your favorites from the 90s, 2000s, today with a bunch of anime theme songs as well. Um, So if you're into that, come check us out. It'll be a good time. We'll be dancing. Um, (laughs) And there's also cosplay... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shh, 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 shh. Don't tell them that that's going on that weekend. Or, or if you can't afford WrestleMania <laughs> tickets, you can, you can come to Cosplay. Hey, I've looked time them tickets us. up. Yeah. Them, thing, them things is a they they are a, a Anakin arm and two legs. Like just come come yeah, have some well, responsible, price friendly f- fun with us. You know <laughs> that was good. That was really good. Thank I, you. Um, thank you. I thank might you, steal that. You. I might steal that. I mean, please uh, do. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> I am but I am but a vessel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a cosplay and courage dance party. But there's also a cosplay contest that we run at at the cosplays event. So um, if you got a really good one, last feel year free to come through. Ball. And it doesn't, yeah, it does not have to be an anime cosplay. I think last year one of the prize winners yeah, was any fictional uh, mechanic. Co- yeah, cosplayed as Jessica Rabbit. I think. Yeah, Jessica was Rabbit. Yes, yes, yes. Yep, sure yes. was. So. Um, fantastic uh fun for everybody please come hang out with us on april 6th at milk boy in philadelphia and um you can follow us at dragon ball for life um on db4l underscore pod uh yeah, at, on instagram and twitter and soon tiktok i believe uh finally we're gonna break into to that space <laughs> so, we're we, we working on some things we work we working on some things yeah, yeah. we're getting there shout um, out to Anchi. but also shout out to Anchi. yeah shout, thank you Anchi. um <laughs> you can also check us out on Facebook if you still use that thing um, at, at Dragon Ball <laughs> Number Four Life on Facebook. Um, I think that's yeah. yeah I um, I'm still waking up, but uh, that's the end of my, my spiel. Okay. So Matt, can you go ahead and, and do the outro, please, so I can go drink the rest of this. I, I sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I sure I sure can good buddy and I, I would just like to say that even though you know he is known for his marksmanship and uh, his his wherewithal with a gun never forget that crosshair do got them hands and you can catch wreck if y'all think shit sweet y'all think like oh if I just close <laughs> in on him he won't be able to get me nah you can get that ass whooped because he got hands <laughs> And feet. <laughs> like, like, never forget. Run up and get done up. 
know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but Animaniacs, you know what we always say here. You know, it, it could be Clone X. It could be SpaceX. It could be, it could be Captain Rex. DMX. You know, it could be it could be <laughs> Captain Rex. You know, it could, it could be Jonah Hex. You know, <laughs> it could be Ray. <laughs> Life can be a beach, but as long as there's no sand, you guessed it. And he gonna be okay. Be okay. May the force be with you. And with you, later, nerds. Deuces. <laughs>